So one of the main questions I get asked all the time is, what is the best outdoor hoop shoe? But to be honest with you guys, they really don't make shoes for outdoor use like they used to. Shoes are getting lighter, faster, more comfortable, but with that, a lot less durable. So I have searched the internet from the far reaches to find a handful of sneakers that I think are gonna be pretty good options for outdoor balling. And I'm also gonna share with you guys what I personally play basketball in outdoors, which I'm actually wearing right now. But wait, 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 wait. Before I show you guys what I'm rocking, let's head back to the studio and talk about some of those other kicks. All right, so before we get into the list of the best outdoor hoop shoes that you could buy right now, I want you guys to kind of know where I'm coming from and what I think makes a good shoe to play basketball with outdoors. And to me, the perfect outdoor hoop shoe consists of three things. The first and most important thing is durability. Now, when you play outdoors, your shoes are going to get beat up pretty fast, a lot faster than they would if you only played indoors. So you need something that's not only going to protect your feet, but also because you want your dollar to be stretched out as far as it can go, because it would really suck if you went out there and bought something that's just gonna kind of fall apart in a month or two. So for example, this shoe right here, the Air Jordan 34, is what I thought the best performing shoe of the year. So while this does perform great, I really love playing in the shoe, it just is not going to be a good option to play outdoors with because the materials are really thin, really flimsy, and the overall durability just isn't great with these. So the fact that this website actually recommends the 34 as a solid outdoor option is just not right. So that's why I'm here to set the record straight so you don't go out there buying something that you feel like you wasted your money on. Now, the second thing that I look for in an outdoor hoop shoe is actually the price. Now, you can easily go on Foot Locker, East Bay, wherever you get your shoes from, and you can find the latest and the greatest, right? You can get the PG4, you can get the KD13 or the Harden 4s. Those shoes might not end up lasting as long as you would like them to, and all of a sudden, you spent full retail price on something that you're just gonna throw away at the end of the day. So for me personally, I look for stuff that's on sale, I look for stuff that's cheap. I look for stuff that's wallet friendly. And the shoes that I'm about to show you in this video are some really great deals. And I think you guys are gonna like them. But before we get to that list, we gotta talk about the last and final thing I look for, which is breathability. I don't know about you guys, but I really hate it when my feet get hot. And when I'm hooping outdoors underneath the hot sun, my feet get really hot and it gets pretty uncomfortable. So ventilation is very important to me. However, this is one of those things that is personal preference. I mean, ventilation is more important to me than it is to some other people. But overall, the perfect outdoor hoop shoe to me is breathable, it's affordable, and it's also durable. And these shoes that I have lined up for you guys more or less check off all of those boxes. So let's get right to it. Let's first start with the hardened step back from Adidas. Now, the reason why these caught my eye, aside from that insanely low price, is the fact that these use durable synthetic overlays in key areas such as the toe box, which will help keep your feet protected and also ensure that your shoes will hold up over a decent amount of time. But on the other hand, the underlay is made up of a soft textile material, which is going to add a lot of comfort and breathability which again is going to be really nice for when you're playing outdoors and it's hot. Now a huge factor in the overall durability of a shoe is how well the outsole is going to hold up over time. So you're gonna wanna end up with something that has a durable rubber compound as well as a deep traction pattern because outdoor surfaces are really rough and they grind down rubber very easily. So having a strong rubber compound is obviously going to help out a lot but a deep traction pattern is important as well because over time, it's just gonna give you more leeway in how long your shoe is going to last. Now, taking a look at the Harden Step Backs outsole, they look like they have a decent traction pattern with a straightforward herringbone design on the forefoot, but overall, the outsole does look a little shallow, so you might start to see somewhere faster than you would expect. So going with something like the Rose 773s, which goes for a similar price, might be the better option here since they have a multi-directional herringbone pattern 
across the entire outsole and overall just has a much deeper traction pattern. Now the 773s don't have as sturdy of materials as the hardened step backs do, but with a textile upper that's fused with plastic in high wear areas, the 773s are going to be a more breathable and lighter option. But with both of these sneakers sitting at $70 or less, I mean, you really can't go wrong here. That is an insane deal, especially since both of these use bounce foam, which as you guys know, is one of my favorite cushion setups of all time. If you do want something with more cushioning, because both of these are a more low to the ground ride, you might want to take a look at the Jordan Jumpman 2020. Now the key feature with these is going to be that massive zoom unit in the forefoot, which is just going to feel absolutely phenomenal. It's going to feel explosive. It's going to feel fast. But if you take a look at the outsole of the Jumpman 2020, the traction pattern is durable. It's deep. So you're definitely going to get your money's worth there. And Jordan brand even beefed up the materials from the 34s, which the Jumpman 2020s are actually a teardown model of. And this is definitely gonna help out with the overall durability. However, out of all the sneakers that I'm gonna recommend to you today, the upper on the Jumpmans are going to be the least durable, but they're gonna be light, they're gonna be breathable, and as long as you're not too hard on your sneakers, these should hold up pretty well. Now, if you are looking for something that's going to be a little beefier in terms of overall durability or just a lot more stable underneath your foot, you might want to take a look at the Soldier 13s because these, they obviously have that extremely high collar, which is just going to feel great for ankle security. But if you take a look at the bottom of this shoe, it has a really wide base, which is just going to feel super stable out there on the court. And they also have a really beefy traction setup, which should withstand heavy outdoor usage. And the Soldier 13s are also going to feel great on your knees and back as well since they have two large volume zoom air units in both the heel and the forefoot. So if you're a heavier player, these as well as the Jumpmans are going to be your best bet. However, for a little bit more money, you could upgrade to the LeBron 7, which is an older model, but with the recent retro releases, you can get a few colorways for $120 or less, which is honestly an incredible deal for these guys because the LeBron 7, has some high tier performance features, such as a full length max air setup, as well as some very durable materials that you're just not gonna find on a modern day sneaker. All right, so those were just a few sneakers that I think would be great for outdoor hooping, but none of those sneakers are the one that I play basketball in. So let's go back to the blacktop where I'll share with you guys what I think is the ultimate outdoor basketball shoe. All right, so when I play outdoors, which in the past was pretty rare, but especially now I have been on the blacktop a lot more because, you know, quarantine, social distancing, stuff like that. And if you're watching this in the future, it's this crazy thing where we couldn't play basketball with each other. So I've just been out here alone, hooping, and I've been doing so in these bad boys. Now this is the Nike Air Bacon. Tim Hardaway was most known for wearing this shoe in the mid to late 90s. Now, the reason why I love this shoe is because it pretty much checks off all of those boxes that I talked about earlier. The materials on these are extremely durable. This red upper is a synthetic nubuck. And if you just compare this to a modern knit, jacquard, textile, or mesh, this red upper is going to be way more durable. I've been rocking these for a long time, and as you can see, they're pretty much still looking fresh. So no signs of intense wear, even though I wear these a lot. But the most impressive thing about this upper is this black part that's kind of going all across 360 degrees near the midsole. Now this black material is kind of like a scratchy nylon. And I'm telling you guys, when you're out there, toe drag in on both sides you're trying to do you know your killer cross and you're dragging your feet this upper is not going to budge at all this material is extremely durable and it's the type of material that you don't see on modern day sneakers anymore so that is one of the main reasons why i love the nike air bacons in terms of ventilation you could kind of see this black mesh on the underlay behind the red upper and the entire tongue is also an open mesh. So you do get some breathability. I'm not going to say it's a 10 out of 10, but I would give it like a solid 
seven, maybe a six and a half out of 10. It's, it's really hot today, so my feet are kind of feeling it. But the point is, it's not a complete sauna. It's not a hot box. You do get some ventilation with the Nike Air Bacon. Now, like I talked about earlier, a huge factor in a shoe's overall durability is how well the traction is going to hold up, right guys? So if you take a look at my Air Bacons, I mean, look at that outsole, guys. It's beautiful, full length, deep herringbone. And the surprising part is, even though I've worn these a lot, there's no real signs of wear, right? Nothing's worn down. It's pretty much the pattern is there 100%. And that's because this rubber compound is the definition of tough. So no matter what type of movement you're trying to pull off out there, maybe you're going for a killer cross, or maybe you're just trying to do a step back, you're gonna be covered no matter what you're trying to pull off especially on this weird blacktop surface where there's a lot of loose gravel and sticks. I mean, a lot could go wrong, but my Air Bacons, for the most part, have done a tremendous job at keeping me locked in onto the cord and not slipping and sliding all over the place. And another thing I love about these shoes is the cushioning system. If you take a look, you have Nike Air, and if I'm not mistaken, it is full length. I mean, that's what I'm feeling. And this is great for the blacktop because these outdoor surfaces are a lot harder on your knees. I mean, there's no give out here on the pavement. So having a cushion setup like this is gonna be extremely useful for us middle to older age guys who need to protect our knees, our legs, and our backs. You're not gonna get a whole lot of core feel with the Air Bacon, but what you are gonna get is a ton of impact protection and that is why the Air Bacon is my favorite outdoor shoe to play basketball in. But the problem is it's an older shoe and Nike doesn't really retro them that much. So it's kind of hard to get. There aren't that many pairs out there. However, if you can get your hands on a pair of 90s basketball shoes, that's what I would recommend to do is go get yourself a retro 90s sneaker because most of them have Nike Air. So you're getting the impact protection. And like I said, they're a lot tougher. But if you want me to recommend a modern day shoe and what I would personally play outdoors with, it would probably be the LeBron 17. Or no, this is 16. Now the reason why I love the LeBron 16 for outdoor use is because a lot of the same reasons I love the Air Bacons. You have a very similar cushioning system. Now this isn't Nike Air, this is Nike Zoom Air. So it's gonna feel a little quicker, a little closer to the ground, but don't get that mistaken. These don't have a ton of court feel, but they do have more than the Bacons. Now, if we're talking about the materials, this is a knitted upper, but this is called the battle knit. So if you're talking about materials in the knitted category, this is about as durable as it's gonna get. And some colorways like the glow in the dark ones that I have here have these synthetic leather overlays, much like that black material on the Air Bacons, which should help a lot out with the overall durability. So if you are going to go with the LeBron 16, make sure you pick up a colorway with these overlays. Now, if there is one thing I had to say negatively about these special colorways that have these overlays, is it does kind of affect the fit. So you're not gonna get that snug one-on-one -on -one fit that I experienced with the colorways that didn't have this overlay, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to take for added durability. So that's my recommendation. I do think Battle.net will hold up outdoors, but I would feel a lot safer picking up a colorway with these overlays. Now, in terms of traction, this shoe is a lot like the Air Bacon. You have a very deep, full length, kind of like modified herringbone pattern. The rubber compound isn't as durable as the Air Bacon's, but again, the traction pattern is deep and they're not flimsy whatsoever. And for the most part, the coverage of the LeBron 16 has been great on this blacktop surface, which makes sense because the traction on the 16s was great indoors. So I have no reason to believe that anyone is gonna have any problem with these outdoors as well. So overall, the LeBron 16 would be my modern pick, but again, the Air Bacons are my all-time favorite for outdoor use. All right, so that pretty much takes care of my list for the best outdoor hoop shoes. It was an honest video, guys. It's not sponsored in any way. So if you wanna pick up any of these shoes, links are in the description box below. But if you have any more questions, go ahead, drop a comment. And if you're wondering about a particular pair of shoes, let me know in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer you, but it's time now to end this video. What should we end it with? Like, uh, we'll do like a Kobe, Kobe fake fade.
guy. Hold on. Hold on. Right here. Right here. Kobe. Kobe. Fake. Faith. There we go. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.